Okay, should have it now. Hey, what's up, Phantom? Happy holidays to you too. Oh, almost. Almost there. Alright, let's do this. I want to preface this with saying, like, um, Shuton, I, 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 this is not, like, uh, some, some new thing that I am the only one thinking of. Uh, one sec. Um, this is not some, like, you know, niche opinion. He, he typically just does phenomenal against Slam any time they played before. Uh, I think his play style tends to lean to it very well in that uh, he, Shutan is known for, like, anti-airing in the sense of he likes to intercept you with his own aerials, especially when you're trying to come in. He knows when to pull the trigger very well. Like, his back airs are, are super well-known. Um, and you're going to see a lot of that in here. Like, he swings a lot. And against other matchups, it may be to a fault where he does a little bit too much. I think he could pull back sometimes. But, uh, that coupled with Olimar's own kind of benefits tends to do very well against a lot of the characters Leo plays. Uh, Bylist is one of them. Obviously, Bylist will lose to Olimar, I would say, just because it's very hard to approach. And we'll see that here. I think Marth also loses to Olimar. It's like even. It's 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 not like a problem. Pyre Mithra probably would have been the best bet in Leo's thing. Maybe Joker, but it's like, once again, both of matchups are perfectly fine. Uh, as long as you know what the fuck you're doing. And obviously, Shutan does. Um, so you'll see here that Shutan is just like, I want to say consistently one step ahead. He goes for a couple things that I won't always agree with, but yeah, we'll get into it. Starting PS2 pretty standard. And you see, like, instantly, like, he's he's away from him. He's like, we're not going to do this. We're not going to... We're not going to... Uh, we're not going to engage, because essentially, like, he needs to start getting Leo to either take damage, get a lineup he wants, and to make him approach. Like, he'll still threaten to get near, but it's like, you see how he's like, go ahead, hit those Pikmin. Oh, now I have a purple. He, that was an accident, but I think he still would have got hit anyways. I think he handles kind of this opening bit a little poor once he starts getting hit. Like, he down tilts, spot dodges because he's worried about getting potentially grabbed. Leo goes right now to shield, which I think is really good, like short hop and air. Kind of catches that, uh, and it makes sure that if uh, he spot dodges or potentially even rolls, he can try and drift with it. So it pretty much beats everything but the shield itself. Um, but he took that risk there. Gets nared here, and then he tries to whistle, it looked like. I'm going to double check this. Actually, no, he might have just gone into hard landing lag. Or, yeah, not hard landing lag, but, like, getting hit down, knocked down, essentially, where he has to land. What? Is that a whistle? Oh, that's a He whistled. He whistled. He thought he was going to dash tack then. Okay, I was right, yeah. So he goes for whistle. Once again, Leo mixes him up. That's just kind of Leo's thing. He's very good at opening people up and understanding what options they want. He goes for a grab here. Gets down thrown, gets fared. It's fine. Thirty eight percent's not a big deal. It's upbeat here. Gets the uh, the old DI trap. But like even though he's lost his percent lead, like he got kind of opened up and he took pretty much seventy four percent off like one singular set, uh, like neutral interaction to disadvantage play. Like it's not it's not a problem. He's sitting in that kind of mid range, like right outside the burst range of Leo, but also not so far away that he can't capitalize or work his way forward. Really like that pair. He goes for jab, jab, grab. Quick down throw fair. And he's back getting distance again. I think he does play a little a little aggressive at the ledge, but I mean, that's kind of a style. I personally don't recommend it against something like Byleth, especially Leos, because it's so easy to get up aired, up bead, whatever, and you're reversal. But this is what I'm talking about when I say he... Look what he does here. So he, he down throw fairs, he runs in, he down tilts, and then he immediately fares. Like, he, he was one step ahead of it. He knew... That Leo was probably going to to uh, jump out of shield here because if you look at it too, like the spacing on that down tilt's immaculate. Like you could probably shield grab this. I don't know how Bylus grab is. I think it's not that good. But like, look at this. This is this is good spacing on down tilt. That's tipper down tilt, right? And then, that's still not safe, right? Minus seventeen, but then he immediately goes into the fair and catches him. And that's kind of what I was talking about, where he's great at calling out people's aerials, reading their jumps, and understanding how they want to interact. I don't really like going up there. That's just greedy. That's going to get him killed. 
and he gets hit for it, and then he dies for it, because that's what I'm talking about, where you need to respect Leo at the ledge to a degree, especially when he's playing this. Like, something I've realized fighting Leo, especially when I was fighting his Byleth at Smash World Tour last year, was like, you could be cooking him, but it doesn't matter if you go into his domain and you give him that advantage. Uh, and that's exactly what he does here. Like, Leo wants to reverse you. He wants you to overextend because you're so greedy. And he's very good at playing evasive, especially with a character with a tether like Byleth, and someone who's very, I commit to this with Olimar. Uh, and he exploits that here. I like what he's doing here. Neither of them are committing too much, and either one wants to be the one to get opened up first. So it's a lot of like, let me hit you with the tip of something, shield. Hit you with the tip of something, shield. Make it awkward to grab you or follow up. And kind of just try and open you up and see if I can get some chip damage there or, or hit you first. Blade's doing a really good job with his fares. Great thing. I don't know if that was a roll read or a mistake, but the fact that he held that, he was able to get it was very good. So, so solid. Look at this. Gets that really tight spacing bear to the ground, right? He air dodges. He goes into it. That bear, I don't even think that bear would have hit. Like, if you pay attention now, oh, no, it, it would have hit. Yeah. So, it was perfect, right? He gets up. He gets hit. He air dodges. He gets lag. And he's instantly buffering that down smash, right? He recognizes it's going to cover on both sides in case you cross me up. I don't need to worry about any awkwardness uh, with sour spots or anything. If I hit you with this, you're dead. Um, really good use. Falling into that area once again. And it's like one of those things where... We'll look at like how he sets it up it's kind of scary to do because like he's in disadvantage but it's it's more like if he stays on the ledge and he's any he, any he spaced the bear appropriately you can hit under the ledge but he's far enough on stage to where leo would have to essentially come up with an attack but leo's so scared about dying he doesn't want to trade he doesn't want to do anything and he's ready to capitalize on that and i think that's really good and now he's got a good lineup that he that he typically likes like yellow yellow red uh purple is very much in line with what what shuton tends to go for goes back into the mid-range again right he gets up close they do a little kind of back and forth he recognizes i can't hit that shield i can't really do that what's up nimbus happy holidays you too just doing this leo shoot on review he recognizes that he can't really hit a shield that reliably and he doesn't want to risk it so he goes back to mid-range until he can catch leo slipping which is here right he misses his aerial he goes to shield for even just a moment and then he's like all right i got you with the dash grab and smooth the red so he's gonna follow up see red down throw blue up smash doesn't matter it's a dash grab so he's gonna be even closer so to that low percent so now i can open him up that's, that's an important part of, of doing that as well, is that understanding how you're going to get your down throw follow-ups. Whether you're dash grabbing, pivot grabbing, standing grabbing, what color you're using is going to influence a lot. And since there's no rage here and he's low percent, that dash grab with a red is a free down to up smash. You're going to get that no matter what. He cannot DI out of that. Uh, and then you can get the, the up to follow-ups. See? I am getting jammed by Fighter Pass 2, Charles. Well said. Yo, Magic Can't. Thanks for the uh, 27 month resub. Is it going to go up on YouTube? Um... Maybe. I haven't decided yet. I love this neutral out of shield. It's so good, too, because not only... Like, it's not a perfect option, because neutral air... Like, it's not going to be safe, right? He's doing a rising neutral air, but, like, look how look how awkward he makes it. So he goes for that, tries to hit, recognizes that hit, immediately goes on the shield and I like this. Not doubling down, recognizing he can't get out of there fast enough, so he puts up his fast defensive option shield. Leo is not going to realistically want to fast fall grab him, and if he is... A chance shoot on reacts or does something to it so he opts to shield here he gets hit and then he does this narrow shield and he crosses up nair is so potent at shield poking right i want to see if i can let me show you this move N olimar's nair is is and anyone who plays olimar will tell you this do you ride some ledge with it shield poking is just like what it does look at this thing so it's like tame but it's like multiple hits in different areas and then that last hit is just massive and if someone drops shield, they don't count the hitch right. It's almost like how Leo uses Nair. Or maybe they angle their shield wrong, or it's getting smaller and they get poked. You pop them up with that, now you're back into it. You can potentially combo. They're not going to hit you, and he's crossing him up, so it's even more awkward. I actually want to see how he gets this hit. I want to see if Leo drops shield or if he gets pumped. So that's first hit. Second hit. Third hit. It looks like he dropped shield there. Yeah, he dropped shield. Leo dropped shield on hit three, and he gets popped up by the fourth hit. So take this, all of our players. If you can, if you can mix Leo's shield hard enough when there, I guarantee you, you can do it to everyone else.
It's funny. He goes for this. And this is the exact same thought I have, right? So let, well, he's jabbing him. So we can we can understand this. Let's say Leo's, so Leo's getting pressured. He's taking a lot of damage. It's very common that, uh, that players are not going to want to be dying away in case they die, especially when you have a purple in your line, right? So he runs up here. He catches the laggy neutral air with a run-up jab. And he goes, for a, he goes for a down smash here. He runs up a little bit and then does it. I think he could have either grabbed or what I would have done, and I'm fucking crazy, is I would have ran up to his shield. I would have started charging purple smash. I would have been like, drop shield. I swear to God, I'll kill you right now. Right? But he goes for the down smash. Not too crazy. But you see, like, even with that jab, like, it doesn't need to be a crazy follow-up, but he's still pressuring him. He's seeing what he wants to do. And that that's even a, a form of just, like, reading his defensive options and seeing how he wants to get out of there. Okay, so I think he spot dodges and tries to go for an up tilt here to anti-air. Or he might... I think he just drops shield, actually, and then he gets hit because he's dropping. Or he, oh, he tried to jump out of shield. Okay, then he gets hit. Buy you Dragonflight? Um, no. Buy it yourself. It's very fun. So he's at the ledge here. Gets the jump. Leo was ready for that. He he had that. I like the whistle trying to cover in case he fares or bears, which is smart. Um, the up air was just ready. Leo had him there. And you're gonna take a couple of That's fine. I like the drift off stage again, right? And this is another thing we can talk about uh when it comes to playing Walmart. Like you get hit in disadvantage, you're getting opened up. You don't need to double down and try and do it again. Go back to the ledge, go back to the safe area and try and restructure your disadvantage. Uh, even, you know, I don't even, I don't remember exactly what happens after this exact scenario, but the fact that he took two up airs, he was like, okay, no, nope, you know what, we're not gonna, we're not gonna play that game. Not worth air dodging wrong, getting up aired again, taking more damage. We can throw the Pikmin, they're gonna come back to me because they're gonna be on stage, I'm gonna grab a ledge, I'm gonna be back in a new type of disadvantage where I can play around that again and try again. Purple dies, gets fall damage, bad game. Um, but he gets back on stage. Look at that, look at that. He reset disadvantage, acknowledged that it was a mistake. And then, I like the air dodge, and I think that's something you can, Olimar can definitely utilize. Well, you gotta be careful, because since Olimar's so floody, he tends to kind of linger when you're in, when you air dodge the ledge, like, you'll, uh, and then you gotta hover there for a second, so certain moves will catch you. But he does that at a pretty good, uh, pretty good time and angle. And he goes for the roll here, and I like the immediate roll, because Leo was probably reading a jump again, because that's what he did last time. It's the most unpredictable, or it's the most unreactable option, right? So he just immediately goes for the roll, and Leo was not really spaced around for it. And then he immediately jump whistles in case he tries to do something. And he needs to come in with the back air. And now they're back into another sequence. And then he hits him with one of those fairs again. Catch him out of shield. Olimar's fast out of shield options. Being that forward air and that neutral air out of shield. Leo lands right in front of him. Gets uh, the jalapeno to the back of the head. There it is again. There it is again. He's like, I know you think I'm going to go for the back air. And this is so wonderful watching this. Like, it's, it's weird because... Purple back air is safe, and he even puts his back to him. You know, he does the one back air, right? So he he knows he's threatening back air. Here, you would think, oh, he's in a back air again. He's right there. But I love this neutral. And he starts spacing it to where he's even going to cross him up again. He's going to create another scenario where now he's on the in other side of Leo. So it's now more awkward to punish, potentially shield poking him or catching him dropping shield here. And it just works out really well. And I think that's a great tempo shift from doing that back air because so many times people are ready to parry the back air. And this multi just fucks up their groove. He goes for that. That's a classic. You air dodge. You hit someone with there, and they buffer air dodge in or out. Or not buffer, or they panic do it, and you hit him. Leo being a little bit uh, a little bit wiser to the tricks. He knows, okay, don't fuck with that. Just, uh, just jump out of there. You know, if I get up here, and he could have up aired him, right? That, that is a read. Uh, but but Omar, or, or Shutan was going for more of the classic, you're scared, you don't want to die here. I'm going to get you left or right. And he goes, for the, he goes for the read in here, and part of the reason of that is uh, Leo, or a lot of players traditionally, when they're air dodging in, they're high percent. The thought is get to center stage. So because they want to go to the center stage there, they're going to try and get away from him. They're going to typically go in. They don't want to go to the uh, farther end of the stage to be close to the blast end. But lay ahead to there. That is something you can definitely work on as well. If you're re hitting these nares and you want to follow, pay attention to what your opponent's doing. Do you have a player that likes to jump? I've I've, I've hit those 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 nair uh, jump reads a ton with up airs. So you can kill very early. Look how high he is. He's at 107%. Probably going to die to a purple up air that high. You know, Shutan and the buzz, you see the Olimar come out. I feel like the, uh, a lot of commentators don't know a ton about him. But I did a good amount that do. I, I think uh, you should have the right commentators. And these guys are pretty knowledgeable. Uh, you have Coney, you have Char uh, Charles, E, and them. They, they, they've done the research for the most part. It's not perfect, but it's, it's pretty pretty good. Specific matchup, yeah. Very controlled environment for the character. The buzz, you see the Olimar 
So they're back in that kind of like mid range trying to open each other up. You see Leo's doing a lot of like, I want to fight you now. And I, I don't like this forward air from Shutan. But this is kind of what he does, right? He goes for these arrows. He likes to swing. He tries to pressure you in that sense. He goes for fair and he gets hit for it because he's out of the range. He doesn't hit him. He's just whiffing blind and he gets snared for it. Good DI though getting away. And he goes back to ledge. Even if he gets hit here, which he's about to, let's, let's understand what this means. Olimar gets hit. Olimar recognizes I'm hit. He DIs up and away. He gets out of there. And then he goes, go to ledge. I have a different dynamic of disadvantage here. I have set options that allow me to recover in a way where if I play within these set options right, I win. I don't need to perfectly react or bait anything out. I just do it. And that is, that you can find comfort in the ledge if you do it properly. So he tries to swing there and he gets hit. So he drifts back out and he's like, okay, you got me once. I'm not doing that again. Unfortunately, he gets bamboozled by this. He was just a little too high. I mean, I don't know if there's anything he realistically could have done there. Maybe if he would have went more straight up. I don't know how that up B's and grab box is. I've seen some really janky shit with it. Um, but I think he had the right idea there. It's just when he went to ledge the first time, he decided to reswing immediately, and that kind of cost him. And that, that's just how you're going to die sometimes. But it's still close, right? Like, even with this. And you see, all right, he's back. He, Shutan wants that. He literally ran into him, and he said, I have a purple. I want to kill you. Right? And he's like, starts to back air. He gets hit outranged by it. But he's like, okay, that's cool. I'm coming up with another aerial. This dude swing like, it, the balls on him uh, are astronomical. Just the way that he he knows. And, it, it, you know, he's not right all the time. But the confidence he brings with the ability to swing and understanding, like, you know what, you're going to hit me? That's a risk. Because if you double down, again, and I, I tell a lot of people don't always do this. Excuse me. It can fail. And you can get opened up. But he's just like, no, you're too low percent. I'm too low percent. You can't, you can't do anything off this. I'm going to hit you here. I'm trying to jump again. That was garbage. I'm just going to outright say it. There was absolutely no reason to give her that purple. I don't know what the fuck Leia was trying to do there. Maybe he was hoping it would catch him recovering high. It just kind of looked crusty in my opinion. But it ended up wearing out. So he back airs him here? This is another great mix-up. Or not mix-up, but like kind of sequence that you can throw on people. Sometimes when you up smash people or you get away with it, and they're not perfectly ready to punish it, um, we're not up smash, but like back air people shield just immediately following up that pressure can catch them off guard if They try and jump or just not being ready for it You know, there's a lot of times where I'll break shield by purple back air purple up smash because it, that, that sequence breaks shield even if it's full and You can catch people lacking like that. So if his timings aren't perfect, then they definitely will slip sometimes go up and capitalize like this Ditches the blue says I don't like those at low percent but it's okay. And I want you to, I, I want you to really pay attention here. Like, Shutan's not cooking with double purple a lot. Like, that's not his thing primarily. He loves his reds. He likes his yellows. Uh, and and it, it works well because he likes to swing with arrows. He likes to intercept. And he'll find his skills other ways. But this is a, you know, a great example of how, like, I think purples are a very fundamental way to open people up. But you don't need them if, you're, if your other aspects of your game are very solid. So you can, you can, there's a lot of versatility in how you can uh, play the, the uh, picking game. So here, I think this, this, uh, throw was good. I probably would have grabbed there too. He could have grabbed instead of the red, but I, I don't blame him for doing this. Unfortunately, he just gets dodged. But I think it's not a terrible play. And then he just swings again, dude. He just swings again. So this is an example of him. Just like, he comes up, he wants to swing. He has the yellow too, so he's feeling like, okay. You know, I think this can work. He gets to hit the first one. I don't blame him for falling with a dare there. It's Like I said, it's pretty big. You can catch him. But it's, it, it's an example of where you need to be careful. Like, you can't always just get hit double down. And that's exactly what this is where he's getting down to. Catches him there, so lucky. Good, uh, good up smash usage using the yellow huge hit box catching the side B. Goes through, fares him again. You see, he's swinging with the aerials. He wants to kill him with those aerials. I like this delayed recovery. Mixing it up very well. Dutan doubling down again. This, I, I legitimately think he should have just got center stage. Respect that I get he wants to kill him. But he almost, he's, he's risking dying for it. Like, he wants the back here. You see, he tries to eat him there. Leo understands this, rises with that this time, says, no, you're not catching me with this. We're not doing this. Um, and then ends up punishing him. Whereas if he gets under stage, he holds it. He can kind of re-establish that foothold, that neutral, and start kind of spacing him out again. But instead, he gets hit there. And it's it's, it's a riskier play. Like this recovery. Staying patient to the ledge. Not, 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 not trying to force his way in. Uh, he neutral air dodges. Recognizes that Shutan doesn't, or that Leo doesn't want to be on top of him too, too much. And he's like, all right, that's fine. I'll get Pikmin. I'll stay out of your range. I can react to what you do, or I can shield it, and I can kind of poke you safely. And that's what he does. And nice taking backstage gradually. He wanted that fucking shield break. 
He was like, bro, I dare you to keep shielding. But Leo is ready for it. I like that drift out again. And goes into the pair there. So, unfortunately, because he was shielding, had he gone for, like, an up smash, it's either going to miss or it's going to sour spot. It's going to be trash. He can't drop shield and run an up smash. It's just going to be too slow based on reaction time and everything else. And it's not worth the risk. Simple fair there. Perfectly fine. And now he's starting those aerials again, right? You see he wants that back here. There it is. Leo's so greedy to kill those purples. Kills one of them, but because he's got all that lag, ooh, ooh, pulls it right before the down tail hits and kills him for it. Absolutely love this. Leo got greedy. Uh, maybe he thought he could catch it before before shoot time to get to it. Um, whatever it is, that is a great example of, of punishing someone for trying to kill your purples. Uh, and kind of doing it in, in the fashion that Shutan really loves to, which is using those aerials. Um, but you see a lot in this game. He he used a lot of aerials to get hit, uh, and he used a lot to hit him. And it was just, uh, that's the style. And he's going to go for it a lot. It, it doesn't work all the time, but understanding when it works. And I, the problem is, I think for a lot of players, you can't like, ah, yes, this is when you aerial, this is when you aerial. There's times where, like, it doesn't make sense. He just goes for it, and that, that's kind of one of his strengths as a player. Um, but I think what he's doing there is he's he's able to kind of match Leo's game plan and call him out very well and understand when he needs to disperse. Because there were plenty of times where he'd get hit and be like, nope, we're not doing this. I don't need to double down here. And then other times where you do, and that's just that's just the nature of Voldemort. Wow, she's done. What a handsome lad. I think he's a small battlefield. Understandable. Good stage. Yeah, I, I also like this stage a lot, honestly. Pretty much, I know it's not callous. I do not mind against uh, Violet. Goes for the up tilt. Classic nair up tilt. Crosses him up again, right? Pay attention now. He's facing those nairs. He is not landing in front of him. He does not want to be caught lacking. Uh, catches Leo dropping shield here, trying to do something. <laughs> I kind of like this this nair to up uh, th this up tilt to nair to try and catch him. He's staying on the platform. Leo understandably jumps away. That's something you'll see with a lot of top, these top players, and something that someone like Tweak is so well equipped for is just you no. Know, I don't, this is my, I don't need to do this option. And since Olimar's typically so slow, he can't always catch them unless he is, like, kind of preemptively going for it. Drops down, tries the fair here. He's just trying to get back on stage. It's not that great. He doesn't want to pick a default option. So a lot of the times you will see Shutan do, like, Drop down, uh, jump side B, drop down, jump fair, uh, or even with a follow up, uh, like up B after. Um, and Leo was just kind of spacing away. I think it was really good. I, Shutan kind of just needed to be a little bit more patient and not really mix that up. Or not, not sorry, not mix that up, but mix that up and not always just go for that immediate fall of the aerial. Because especially with those colors, they're even less safe and it's just a lot easier to get caught lacking. I like this drift away, kind of reset, get a spacing again. The percent is irrelevant. Like, as long as Olimar is not dead, it literally doesn't matter. He needs to stop spot dodging, though. Leo's in that nair spam mode, and that's going to be a great way to eat up those those spot dodges and catch you, cut, uh, like, jumping, doing things. Watch this. He literally jumps at him with the nair, and he says, okay, you didn't have a move out in time. You tried to side me. My nair's going to beat everything you're going to do, uh, barring, like, an aerial or a very well-spaced uh, grounded attack. That's exactly what that is. I hate how he let that purple die. I love this. I love that. He, he throws in that little patience there. I think he could have cleaned up the timing just a little bit. Uh, like, he gets the double pluck here, the run in and out. Pivot grab might have worked, honestly. Um, but he puts him into the shield there. He ends up spot dodging. The sequence wasn't terrible. I think he could have just changed it up just timing-wise a little bit, maybe delayed it. But overall, really good. He, he's kind of threading that needle in spacing. Like, really pay attention to what I'm talking about. Like, you get a lot of mileage out of this. You don't always need to take, like, large chunks of the stage or of, of the game. But instead, uh, minute details like this, when you have such kind of limited movement and, and space to work with, can go a long way. And this is exactly what it is. Like, he, he plucks here. He runs in, plucks. He, he's threatening by running in, right? He, he's saying, hey, you need to respect me. He's plucking. He's doing something. He's furthering his game plan. He's giving uh, Leo maybe something to react to. And then he immediately runs out because he doesn't need to commit to an option right there in front of him. He recognizes, okay, this is dangerous. Let's run back, see if I can catch him lacking. Maybe I'll do an attack. He does an air here. Uh, then he tries to side me into a grab. Uh, alternatively, standing grab might have worked. He goes for dash grab. Uh, and that might have been just a little too slow or whatever. It was also a little bit laggier. Um, plus... Since spot dodges tend to linger around the same time, they end uh, right before Olimar's standing grab ends. A standing grab there might have caught him. And he's got the white, so he has the length. Gets hit. Goes to the ledge, right? You see he gets hit by this up air. 
And he 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 goes, okay, yeah, that sucks. I jumped away, gets hit, goes immediately left, and then he's like, you know what? I can come in a little bit. I can play with this this platform here, but the ledge is there. But I need to go to it. Really good uh, neutral air dodge getting down, and now he he's he's back on stage, back in neutral, and he can start doing what he has to do again, which is getting that percent. Hits him in the back again. A constant back pressure there, and I think it's so good. He cannot grab him out of that. I don't think up B would even hit Olimar if he tried to do it, if he turns around or anything. Uh, and then he catches him there with an up smash because he's like, what are you going to do, jump on me? Or I think he up airs him. Oh, no, he, he just up smashed him. Yeah, he's just trying to get in there, but he can't get it out in time. Double up smash a classic. I like that Nair. That Nair would have been really good, too, because his shield's low, so it would have poked had he not jumped away. And now he's just back eating that. Go to the jab. Oh. Okay. So, I don't think he was planning for the desync down smash here. I, based on what I'm seeing, I mean, if Leo jumps out instead of air dodging, it's going to hit him. Um, Because he's jabbing, right? So, he's not going to go that far. Leo's DI'ing in, too, I'm pretty sure. Actually, we'll watch that again. So jab. Yeah, he DI'd that jab. I mean, that might be down and away. I don't exactly know how to read these angles. It's either up and in or it's down and away. Uh, either way, down is going to keep him low to the ground. Up and in is terrible. And based on where he goes, I think it might be an up and in. Um, Which is good because look how close it keeps him. And then he goes here. I like the air dodge in from Leo, honestly. I thought he would have jumped. I probably would have tried to pluck grab in case he jumped because he's, he's got a habit of jumping out of disadvantage, right? Um... Shuton had the right idea here. It's just he waited, he, I, whether because he had to or because he wanted to or he didn't mean to, he waited too long till the blue got up there, and he was just a little too far in to get hit by the down smash from the purple side. Unfortunate. But controllable. So much damage, but just passive damage. Catches Leo shield, and he said, ooh, big mistake there, Bucko. You cannot hold shield. I have the blue. I think that's a big, big fault on Leo's part. Uh, when you are, um, a good rule of thumb when you're fighting Olimar, uh, assume he has a kill throw. He might not always have it, sure, but assume he does, uh, when you're a high percent. Olimar player, the best Olimar players will find that blue grab. If you, if you 100% know that he doesn't have it, okay, you're recognizing, you're watching his lineup, but if you slip your mind, that's how shit like this happens, or maybe you hold shit a little too long, and he had that blue in front. That's an easy catch by Shuton saying, you want old shield? All right. Let that air dodge back. Rolls away. Now he's got... Leo's not pulling that trigger too quick, right? He he gets purple, purple side beat. He doesn't do anything yet. He doesn't want to get fared. He goes for the yellow fair. He crosses him up. He rolls away. Leo's still in shield. He is holding shield, which is crazy. Maybe he's expecting him to up smash him, down smash him, so he can punish outright with a shield grab or something like that. But because he runs away, look what we're doing now. We're back to where he wants. And he catches him. That's such a good fair by Leo. Shuton had all, all the room in the world here. Like, he runs in here. What he should have done was probably, honestly, either run out, uh, like, earlier, or run in and try to intercept him. Uh, either with a dash attack, catching his landing, potentially crossing him up again, right? If he spaces that dash attack right on shield, he's going to cross him up. No way Leo's being able to grab that, and then he doesn't retreat back and get hit because he's just a little too slow. He can't create enough distance, which is exactly what happens here. So he definitely could have pushed his advantage there. I think it would have been a good, would have been a good tempo shift um, that I think would have caught Leo a bit off guard and potentially opened him up with a lineup like yellow, purple, or yellow, white, purple, and could have just been big percent because he's probably gonna be able to combo off that up or that dash tag will i be uploading to youtube i might i'm excited yet but people want it i probably will oh i love that so so uh olimar up smash is actually at its safest when it's at the uh late sour spot at the top and you'll see what i'm talking about here so on certain platforms you can actually hit shielding opponents with that late hit it's not gonna like do anything crazy but there's a couple things you can do here and part of that is you hit this uh that's really safe and then he just goes, he wants to jump away. He recognizes that he catches him with a jump there. He could have, if he thought he was going to shield, he could have also potentially tried to rising nair and shield poke him because the shield was so small at that point. But that was really solid. Free percent. Down air. Yep. Drop down, jump side B. Yep. And now he's back into pressuring. He's got his lineup. He's got two, two regulars and a purple. Kind of how he likes it. He can keep swinging on you. And now he just opens layup. He's pressuring. He's got his forward facing momentum. He catches him here, right? 
He goes, okay, you hit my purple once that downside. I've seen this last time. I'm going to come with an aerial here. This time he goes for fair. Uh, and he catches, his, he tries to catch his jump there. He doesn't hit it, but he ends up going for it. But he doesn't get punished. He's able to hit the ground first, catch Leo whiffing, and then punish him. I really like that down tilt. Gets his fair. The fair is not that committal on Shutan's end. So now Shutan's back in I want to kill you mode, which is where he starts spamming bears. Like, he gets on here. He doesn't pluck. He's just like, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Jump. I swear to God, I'll kill you right now. See? And he's swinging. He's forcing it. This is a classic Olimar trap we fall into where we get a lead and we start feeling too comfortable and then we're just like i have to attack i have to attack one good hit and he's dead it's okay to recognize that right now is not that time you've already made a mistake or two or, or you're, you're kind of getting a spot where if you make this mistake you're gonna get into a disadvantage uh batch and that can be scary thankfully it's it's very minimal he doesn't get hit that hard but you see here try to follow with another attack right so he gets hit comes down tries the back air understandably right you know trying to hit him he's right there misses barely spot dodges he doubles down doesn't want to get grabbed Falling into that Olmar habit. That's something he did game one. He misses the back air. He misses the aerial. And he spot dodges. Leo beats it the same way. Multi-hit. Opens him up. Either hits the wrong part of the air or whatever. He misses it. And that's huge. And because Leo made a mistake, he went for a whiff grab, right? Well, let's pay attention here. So Leo made a mistake or things did not pan out to the way he thought. He hits the nair. Tries to go for the dash tag. Shoot on air dodges down. He runs off recognizing jumping's too slow probably i don't want to risk it i can go down jump immediately rising back here and because leo missed his first thing doubled down he's like okay i'll catch you and punish you now he wants the back air so fucking bad He's literally trying to force him with one purple, which we've all done, but it's it's very risky. See? He just... Back off. It's okay. You do not need to force this. You've got... He's at 160. You're at literally like 40 or 50. You do not need to make this go any crazier than it needs to be. Like, this is fine, right? They're kind of going back and forth. They're trying to hit each other. Nothing's perfect, but it's fine. But here, it's like, let him come back. Like, stand about where you are and hold shield or get right out of his threatening range and see what he does and poke him with something and kill him. Don't try and double down and do some shenanigans because he will outrange you like this. So he's trying to hit him. He just wants to poke him. He wants to kill him. He's really trying to rush this. Good. Get the fuck away from him. Get the Thank you. Thank you. You see what I'm talking about? Do you see the clear difference between him waiting his turn and him forcing the matter at hand? He took 100, almost 100%. He's like, I gotta attack. I gotta attack. I gotta attack. And that's not to say be passive all the time. That's the only time to swing. But recognizing I do not need to force this is so much better. He has to get back on the ledge at some point. And you know what happened? He died for it. Because Leo tried to attack. He sat right outside that range. Right? He recognized. He said, oh, cool. That's it. You literally cannot reach me here. Now you're going to die for it because I'm going to swing. You're going to try to drop shit, whatever. Like, and there was no way if Shutan does that fair right that he's going to get punched either. He called it out. He outspaced him. He did his due diligence. He made the side of judgment from last stop. Or the last interaction, I should say. So good, so good. Swine's on tipper. Jump side B, yep. Good, good. I really like this. So he kind of baits like as if he's going to go like into the ledge there. You see how he goes back and forth, kind of making it ambiguous. Comes through with a fair, catches him before the F tilt. Immediate side B. Honestly, a really great option. You could try and immediately grab there if you want, either with dash grab or standard grab if you think it'll reach. Uh, but side B, oftentimes people will do things so you can catch them, get that extra percent there, and it works up well there. And now he's just swinging. He's really just like, I think at this point he's at like, I'm at a high percent. I think I can hit him. We're in a scuffle. He really wants to kill me. He's calling out Leo's desire to want to end that stock really quickly. And he's at a spacing where he can kind of keep following up, right? So he goes for one fair. He tries to F-tilt again after he misses. Fares him. He goes for the side B. Then he goes back into it. And there he finally gets hit because he's going for a white side B. It's not going to catch him and he ends up dying for it. But I think he was fine with taking that percent. That's a risk he wanted to take. Keep kind of hitting him. And he had it just 
kind of proper. It's just that white side be there. It was leaving him uncovered. Leo was just going to keep doubling down on those F-tilts. I think it was or dash attacks or whatever he wanted to kill him with. Goes to the spheres. You know he loves them. I love that run off there. So good. Goes. I so I, I would have been thinking run up jab here. Maybe catch a neutral tech or something like that. But he ends up running off fairing him. And instead of going and like run up jab jab, thinks he can't get there in time. And realistically, he wouldn't have been able to. He goes for the fair, covers that extra distance, hits him again. And it's like you know we'll just take the three percent here. We'll keep taking stage control and knock you off. I like that slight timing adjustment in the jab. Watch what happens here. So he goes up, down tilts. It kind of whiffs. Right, he does the nair. He spot dodges into immediate jab, and then ever so slightly waits. That that is not an, that is not a jab jab. That's a jab trying to do something jab catches him, and then he can immediately run up follow up grab because of the way what Leo ended up doing there. And then he tries the back air there catches him. He's like, you bet if you di in the game's over. So he realizes he di's out. He kind of drifts anyway. Goes for a down air, a little bit risky, but he tries it. Uh, platform poke with that nair kind of just you can't do anything about this i'm gonna go under i'm not gonna go up just enough it'll pop you up it'll put you in an awkward spot get a little bit of extra percent and i'm perfectly safe and now he's back into that back here back here back here back here oh so good so good let's watch perfect clean whistle runs under with the up air he goes Ping. That's a, that's an on hit desync. That is, that looks like it's desyncing on the hit of his Pikmin. You see, you see, it's hitting the purple. It's not hitting him. On hit desync, guaranteed to get the hit. No clank. So good. So. Good. And that's why you should pair, like, pairing Byleth Nair as a Lamar can net you so much. So powerful. That, you have enough time? You have enough time to go parry in the forward smash. Really great stuff coming. It's because the on hit desync, Charles. That's why you have enough time to do it. I think he took the headset off. I think he might have. He might have found it was God. Like a whisper from heaven. I wonder what you see here if you're Leo. I mean, the bar for this time. There's only one option. <laughs> I, I legitimately feel there are only a few people whose play styles really mesh well against Leo and can really keep up. And, like, what I love about watching someone like like Shuton play against Leo is that it's not like, oh, I cheesed you at the last second with my with my freebie kill confirm off Nair, or I, you know, I hit you with some DLC cheese bullshit, obviously. I, I wouldn't even say Power Myth are really like that. It's just, like, really good fundamentally sound gameplay consistently kind of checking Leo and understanding where he wants to go and being ready for him and calling out a lot of those preferred habits that him and a lot of other strong players have and honestly i might i might honestly watch tweak after this tweak versus uh shutan because when i was watching that there was a lot of issues in that as well and i think tweak is someone who's built for killing olimars um and it just it, it's great contrast God's favorite player. <laughs> Unfortunately, you cannot stop the goat Olimar. So, starts out with side B, easy, just getting the percent. Not bad, shields then there. Goes for a roll here, gets caught, understandable. You're going to take some hits here, and that's fine. The big thing, really good DI out, says, I'm going to get away from you. We're not playing this game. Part of that combo DI I was talking about earlier, you need to have that with Olimar. Minimizing the impact of, of hits, openings, and disadvantage is huge, and it's how you prolong those stocks, live a long time. Make sure you're DIing those things right, and when you're getting hit or you're about to get hit, understand what you need to do. Comes down with a fair, swinging non-stop. I really like this grab here, right? So he goes for one fair. He catches an immediate rising fair. He comes down, hits another one. That shit's threading the needle. Great spacing from Leo or from from Shuton to just barely dodge that. Because like if we look, he drifts out after he goes in. Like he goes in and he drifts out a little bit in case he needs to grab ledge in case he needs to do whatever. Recognizes, oh Leo whiffed. Let me come back down again. And then immediately runs into the uh, he, or he lands and he goes for a standing grab, which I really like. Understanding the spacing has two Pikmin, so it's going to be not the most range, but still solid range. 
Uh, oftentimes, uh, players are going to, especially when they have over-centralizing out-of-shield options like Martha Lucina, they're going to want to put that shield in because they've been hit. They've already missed whiffing once. Great knowledge there to go for the shield. He's grabbing with the red, too, so he's going to be able to down throw into a fair again. It's going to be easy damage. Uh, what I think the difference between Shutan and the Myolomar? Um, he's very good at calling players out in the air, and his aerial game is just really, really powerful. He doesn't need purples to open people up a lot. Uh, it's a lot, honestly, between me and him both. Just sitting back, getting that free percent, letting Leo essentially swing by himself. I like that. Like, pay attention to how Shutan is using his Pikmin. He's letting, like, he's pressuring Leo away right now to where he's kind of sitting around him and he's swinging. Sure, he's trying to hit him. But he's almost like, I'm letting you pick the option first. So, like, here, he lets him rise, and then he hits him with an up smash. Kind of throws there, he hits him there with a fair. Comes down again, what's he do? He hits, lets him hit again. He recognizes he's going to shield, try and swing. He maybe thought, Leo thought, oh, Shutan's got an opening here. I just saw him swing. Olimar went for a bit of a more lagless option, kind of opens him up, hits him with an up air, and kills him. And now he's just cooking. Character with range only. Uh, I mean, he likes sorties. Like that DI way. Get that percent, get that percent. Easy. Make him come in. Marth has to come in. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ugh. Ugh. The awareness. This this is what it this is what it's all about. Latches white hits purple fair, right? Down tilt understands I can't follow up here. So what's he do? He shields. This makes sure when he falls with an up air, which is a common combo breaker in a sense from Mark, because he starts down, it's very fast. It's gonna swing up, or if he up beats, he doesn't get hit because he understands percent's not high enough, I cannot follow up. And then he throws out a grab, grab beat shield, a grab beat spot dodge, because the frames linger better for Olimar's grab. It catches him. Holy shit, that was immaculate. So he goes for it here. It gets, get, gets a little greedy. I like the beefy up from Leo there, kind of catching him like, oh no, you can't throw these down for free. And he gets up, and then he goes immediately for a jab. I'm not sure what he was trying to read here. Maybe a roll in or something like that. Fortunately, he puts him in a bad spot. He gets fared, but it's not the end of the world. He's got a whole stock, pretty much, uh, to work with. I like that. Throws out a few whistles. He's like, mm, I, don't, I don't want to die here. Goes for the dare. Remember, at this point, all these trades are going to help him a lot more, so that's the important thing. Ends up getting up here to get up there up aired there again but it's fine he's got 80 or he's got 90 percent on and that's the important thing the goal is to widen the gap here so he can get him into a, into, into the spot where one or two hits and he's dead and he's already had a hit most things from that purple and he's dead i like this waiting for the pikmin to come back slight uh, mismanagement there or miss space uh misspacing whatever you want to call it I love it waiting. It's like, come on in, come on in, do something. I literally do not care. I'll wait until you give me my opening. Good air dodge in there, doesn't risk anything. I think uh I think he had the right idea with the patience here from Shutan's in. Like he gets up, he puts up the throw, and then he shields. When he jumps here, it should have been jump side B, right? Jump side B is gonna open him up to where you can probably follow up with something, it's gonna get him off you. You have your second purple coming back. And it's gonna cover him if he drifts back here, which is exactly what he does. He drifts back, he does his down air, covering all that range, and that stops the fair. Uh that's just kind of Shutan's go-to option a lot of the time, really trying to punish him. And I think he does it well. But here with two purples, I think you can open someone up with side B and kind of just get yourself going that way and understand that it's gonna cover all the same spaces of fair, but more. He's just swinging, bro. He's just fucking swinging. Oh my god. Oh, he could have grabbed. He could have grabbed that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Really good reaction there. Understanding it. That's the stock. Fair enough. Nope, he just waits. He's, he keeps sitting in that zone where he thinks Leo can hit him. And at this point, maybe Leo did give up. Maybe he just kind of accepted he wasn't playing good enough for the set or whatever it is. So maybe he just wasn't being as, as kind of uh, committed to it. But, like, let's pay attention to that spacing again. He got a lot of uh, mileage, especially against the Marth, out of, like, sitting right outside of the range and making it look like he was vulnerable, either by doing something like a down air and then not being vulnerable or walking in and letting himself kind of just 
gracefully dodge it, shield it, just outmaneuver it slightly, and then come in and use that fair. Fair probably being the MVP of this match for him. I think he was just doing such a good job of calling Leo out and making him uh, be punished for thinking he could swing a lot of times where he couldn't. Um, now, these characters are going to give uh, Olimar a lot of leeway because they can't run him over. They can't force the game to be what it wants. It's not like a Pirate Mithra where you have Mithra gunning you down the entire time. You have that frame rate of that speed. It's not like Fox or other characters. These are characters that... You know, they have a bit more finesse, and they're good at kind of stopping you from doing in, going in and doing stuff, but Olimar is kind of that natural wall, so when you have to come in like this, it's going to be very difficult. So just uh, immaculate gameplay from Leo. I think he did an absolutely fantastic job. Um, kind of holding Leo accountable for a lot of the swinging here. Uh, I have no idea either of their opinions on this set, um, but just from watching, I think he displayed a really good understanding, uh, and it's something they got progressively better as the set went on. Uh, of how to interact with, with Leo, because in the beginning, the Violet game was pretty close, uh, and he managed to clutch it out, and as we saw him go through, yeah, there were some times where he'd get a little greedy, and he'd try and double down or triple down on his advantage and make sure to get a kill, but you, you saw he kept resetting and recognizing that it was time to get out of there, not force the matter at hand, because if he did that, uh, someone like Leo, especially with the characters he plays, can be so lethal off a couple interactions if you pick the wrong option. So just overall, great gameplay. Love the disadvantage, DIing out a lot, really getting away, minimizing the impact of those. You didn't really see Aleo open him up with anything. There wasn't any, like, dare spike with Marth into F-tilt or F-smashes. There wasn't any crazy kooky stuff with, like, uh, you know, Leo down air giving him a chance to do that. He just did not let him get on top of him. He was always swinging when he was nearby, forcing Leo to get off, so they'd have to fight more horizontally, if anything, a lot of the time, uh, unless they were just in a quick, tight scuffle. So definitely some, some great gameplay, and I, I hope you guys uh, learned a lot from this. I think uh, Shitan is a absolutely fantastic Olimar, and you can, you can pull a lot from his play style. And, you know, you might not be able to always understand why he tends to swing the way he does or kind of get in there. Um, but there's just so much kind of uh, moments where you're like, okay, I see what he's doing here. I see why he's swinging this way. And you can try and understand why he's doing it and kind of build off of that, or maybe you can try to incorporate it. But if you do want to try and build off of these game uh, the game plans with it, you have to try to understand why he's swinging when he is like maybe he thinks okay they're gonna jump here or oh you know like when leo was playing violets and he down tilt twice like he caught the second one he caught that he wants to jump out of it so stuff like that so you can break it down